Hello, this is Nicole with Angelic Therapy and Healing. So we are going to be doing something a little different. Instead of doing your typical weekly readings, we're actually going to do a monthly reading for September for each sign. Hopefully that will help kind of dive into some specifics that are happening with you and your situation at this time to get you some more detailed information particular to you. Do keep in mind this is a general reading. It is for a lot of people. So it, it may, you might find there's only one or two messages for you. When I do these readings, I do pray, prepare, shuffle. I do ask that each of you receive at least one message, but it is, it is good to keep in mind. It is for a large audience. And if you find that not much is resonating with your sun sign, go ahead and listen to your moon or your rising. You might be able to get some information from those as well. And if you're still finding there's only a few messages, that's good. That means things aren't, aren't too bad. So I would be thankful for that. Now, for those of you that are new to the channel, welcome. Glad to have you here. If you don't know much about me, I survived a bombing in Afghanistan. And at that time, my spiritual gifts were opened up, like blasted open up. I am clairaudient. I hear Jesus and the angels talk to me. I'm a medium. I'm an empath. I am certified by Doreen Virtue. I have a couple certificates by her. I am a quantum touch energy medicine practitioner. For those of you that aren't familiar, that is a, it's a healing modality. So like in a three hour healing session, and I give all the credit to God, three hour healing session, I've had hundreds of people healed of cancer, multiple sclerosis, even like hip replacements and down to things that are less severity, like healing broken bones, healing torn tendons, you know, whatever it is, it can be taken care of with quantum touch. So welcome, you can read more about me, I'm not gonna go into any more details, but there is an about me section on my webpage, feel free to check that out. For those of you that have been here for a while, thank you, glad to have you continuing to return. Thank you for your subscriptions, your comments, thanks for sharing these videos. I do love hearing how these are helping you. So even though I can't respond to all of you, continue sending the comments my way, I do love reading them. Now, for those of you that are gonna be asking about sessions or readings, I'm still not accepting new clients because I am booked out quite a bit in advance with current clients, but please stay tuned. As soon as my retirement is finalized, I will then open up for new clients. It should be happening in the very, very near future. I will announce it in these readings. So as soon as it's announced, then you will be able to go online and book appointments. So we are going to do a little a little educational bit and actually this is going to be the same intro for every single sign so if you do go and listen to your moon or rising you can skip past this part i know a lot of you are going to skip past this anyhow but i would encourage you to stay because it is going to help you kind of understand what's going on right now with the energy so as we all know the energy is extremely intense right now it has been for most of the year, but especially since we had the eclipse on August 21st. And it's, as you notice, you, you, everyone's like, oh, why hasn't it settled down? Because it's, it's starting to ramp up even more. And it's gonna continue like this all the way through the end of September. Many of you know that on September 23rd, there is going to be that Revelation 12 sign. If you are not familiar, there are a bunch of videos on YouTube just go to watch whichever one you are guided to watch and you'll be able to get some information on that. The, um, the 144,000 should all be sealed by September 23rd. And what you're gonna find is things are going to start to ramp up even more than they are. So if you've not done any research yet, there is this Schumann resonance and it's, it's the Earth's heartbeat. Essentially what it is, you know, the earth has a frequency and, it, and it, it's an interplay with our electromagnetic field. Essentially, it's the pulses of energy between the earth's surface and our ionosphere. And for years and years and years, the earth's resonance heartbeat was at 7.83 hertz. And what they noticed in 2014 is that it began increasing. And 7.83, if you think of it, it's kind of like a, an alpha theta, like a dream state. You know, you're very calm, you're very relaxed. Once it gets over 16.5, that's kind of like, you know, actually over 15. It's kind of like an awakened calm. So like an awakening, spiritual awakening. And that is a, why a number of people have been going through all this awakening stuff. It's been particularly intense for millions of people since 2014. And it's, it's continued 
to increase. They found that in 2017, it had jumped over 36 plus hertz. And once you get over 36, it's kind of like there's this nervousness and anxiety in people's brain versus that, that calm, healthy state. But what that does is that that starts to change our DNA, that starts to bring in more of God's light. It, it, pushes, it pushes out the dark. And we see that every day. We see these, these things happening and, and we're just, we're kind of shocked that these things are happening in our world right now. But, but in order to fill things with more light, with more love, you have to get rid of the dark. And you gotta push the dark out so it comes to the surface so we get to see more of it. Now on a personal level, what's happening for us is that's forcing all of us to release our own individual darkness, our karma. We have to release those things. We have to learn those lessons. We have to heal those things. That's why we've been under such intense pressure and being pushed, kind of like in a pressure cooker that's about to bubble over because there's just so many things being pulled from our lives, released from our lives, let go. But that is because we're being filled with more light, more of God's light, love, coming into a state of unconditional love. To come into that state, we can't hold on to the darkness anymore. We can't hold on to people that aren't meant for us. We can't hold on to situations that aren't meant for us. All those things that do not serve us, all those things that are not of love, of unconditional love, and even down to not loving ourselves, that all has to go. It has to be released, has to be healed. Lessons have to be learned. Things have to be let go of. And, and that's, that's repair us for things that are, that are to come. And it's, and it's all this, this big awakening that we're going through, this, this ascension process. And there's a lot of ascension symptoms and things that you go through. There's actually a guy that does YouTube videos. I don't often have time to watch his videos, but when I do, he's got really good videos. And I think he posts one per day. But if you wanna check him out, I'll put a link to his YouTube channel below. His name is Victor Odo. And he talks about the ascension process and he gives tips and pointers and, and things that you can do to, to ground yourself, to release things, because there's a lot that you can do. I mean, if you're struggling, cause a lot of people have been struggling since the 21st, they've had a lot of ailments, conditions, headaches, rashes, all types of things popping up. Tonight, fill your tub, fill it up with some water, put some Epsom salt in there and soak in the tub for 20 minutes that will release those physical toxins, that will release those emotional toxins, that will help you get to feeling better. Anytime you feel these things bubble up, that's because you're releasing things. And in order to speed that up, soak in the tub, go see a healer, walk outdoors in nature. You know, for some it's also changing diet, but there's, there's things that you can do to help this, help your system, help your system quickly release it. And, uh, and he does cover those things in his videos. Now, you will find, because a lot of you, again, since the eclipse, you've had just a lot of intense energy, weird things happening with your body, headaches that won't go away. A lot of you are kind of feeling like anxious, like, oh my gosh, something's about to happen. I don't know what's about to happen, but I'm a little anxious. I don't know why. That's because things are gonna be continuing to accelerate. Clear up until September 23rd. Now, with the whole ascension process. It's still gonna be intense after that, but you will get a bit of a breather. So once we get into October, you get to take a deep breath, kind of calm down a little bit. But uh, it is in preparation for things that are to come. So I'm gonna share some information and don't be worried about this information. It's all good. It's all bringing us to a better place. It's not something to freak out about. But uh, when you read the Bible and you look at that, what it talks about in the Bible, like the rapture, th that is true. These things we are going to see in our lifetimes, those of us that are here right now. And again, it's not something to fear, but what we're doing is we're preparing essentially for, if you look at it, it's kind of like the earth is going to be splitting into two. So there will be like this new earth. There's actually some videos out there. Dolores Cannon, she did hypnosis sessions and people were always talking about this, this new earth, this split. And many of the things that she shares in her videos are true. Now, not everything, but many things are. So what I would recommend is, is check out some of her videos. You know, pray, ask that your angels and God and Jesus, this to help, ask that they come and they help you discern what is true and what is not. And ask that they help fill in some blanks for you because you'll find if you ask that, you will know immediately something that's resonating with you that, yeah, that is true, that is spot on. You'll know what is not, and they will fill in the blanks for you. But you do have to pray and ask that they do that beforehand. But 
what's described in the Bible? And, and actually, if you look at, you know, religious texts and, and look at them, there's actually bits and pieces from different parts. Because, you know, Jesus was a Jew. He actually was an Essene. The Essenes are the foundation of Christianity. It kind of all grew and evolved from there. But what it talks about with that, you know, going to be going through the, the, the rapture process, things are going to appear that, that are like that. And now, the severity of things that do occur as we're going through these changes it do hinge off of where we are as a collective. You know, we can make things not as bad. We can make things worse. It depends on whether we're coming from a place of love or whether we're coming from a place of fear, what, uh, where we're all coming from too and what we're contributing to that. But we are going to get to a state in this split where millions of people are going to disappear. What is going to appear for the people that are on old earth is that, you know, they'll wake up because it will happen in an instant, in the twinkling of an eye, and just millions of people will be gone. And those that are going to be gone, those are going to be the people that believe. They believe in God. They believe in Jesus. Um, not to, to delve too deeply into texts and things to look at and scriptures and stuff, but I encourage all of you as we go through this to, to do your own research. Look at things and see what really truly resonates with your heart and soul. Because what you'll find is you'll learn a lot and you'll, you'll, you'll find that these things are going to resonate with you. Because when you watch, like, you know, Dolores Cannon, she did these, these hypnosis sessions and, and they're coined QHHT sessions. When you watch those, you'll find a lot of people when they talk about the new earth, when they are asked, like, what's required to get to the new earth, they always, you know, they'll say that, you know, they have to believe. They have to believe in God. They have to believe. That's true. Now, when you look at Jesus, when Jesus was here, again, he was born Jewish, he was in the scene, but he loved everyone. It didn't matter the color of your skin. It didn't matter what your religious upbringing was. He traveled around. He loved everyone. He was here as a, as a savior and Messiah for everyone here on earth. Everyone, all of us, every single one of us. And it's, it's interesting because when I do healing sessions, and I, you know, I'm a seer as well. Oftentimes when I'm doing them, I'll see what my clients are physically wearing on the other side of the world while I'm working on them. But when I'm doing these healing sessions and you know, it might be my client or someone doing soul contract cancellations with or whatever, the moment that Jesus comes into the scene, because when I'm doing these sessions, Archangel Michael's always there, Archangel Raphael's usually there, but sometimes Jesus will come in during the session. And the moment that he enters, the client, their family members, whomever else is there, all of them will immediately drop to the ground and bow down to him because he, he, em he emulates that power. Jesus is power. He is the light. He is the light that will snuff out the darkness, and, and he truly is. Like if you look at near-death experiences, when people have a God come in that they meet, that they get to experience, it's, it's always Jesus. Um, and I encourage you to try it for yourself, actually, because again, we're all supposed to learn. We're not supposed to just blindly believe things that we're told. You know, we're even taught that, you know, in the biblical texts. We're supposed to learn. We're supposed to discern. We are supposed to dig. We're also, also supposed to ask, and we will receive the guidance and information, not to trust what others are giving us, not to be deceived. So many of you, because you are going through this ascension process, many of you are actually under psychic attack right now there is a spiritual war going on between light and dark. So many of you are being attacked by darker entities. You know that because you're having bad dreams or you know your animals or your kids are just fighting all the time. It's like there's a lot of this anger and hatred in your home. Or maybe you're, you're tripping when you're at the house and it's kind of like you feel like someone pushed you or shoved you or you accidentally cut yourself and you're like, I, I, I wasn't even doing it. It's almost like something else did it to you. Or maybe in your dreams, you're, you're getting red eyes or you're having a really lot of dark, dark dreams. And they're kind of scary and worrisome. When you're experiencing those things, that's because something dark is in your home. It's very easy to remove those things. Now you can, in your own power, command that person to leave, that entity to leave. You can, you can call upon any higher power that you want to. 
you can say in their name for it to leave. What you will find is that entity will not leave. However, when you command it to leave in the name of Jesus and you call on God and Jesus to help you and you command it in the name of Jesus to leave, you'll find that you and your family get instant relief, that it's gone. And that's something I encourage clients to do right away because, you know, I'll talk with clients. They'll be like, oh my gosh, all these bad things are happening and I, I don't know how to stop it. And when I recommend that they try that, suddenly the dark stuff's gone. Suddenly their kids are getting along. Suddenly their animals are getting along. Suddenly they're not tripping and hurting themselves anymore because there is power in the name of Jesus and it's gone. But you again, don't have to believe me. <laughs> try it yourself. See how it works. Now, I know I've shared in some other videos that last September I had, uh, I was falling asleep and there was this, it was as though someone was standing outside of my bedroom playing a trumpet. Now, it's interesting because in, you know, Jewish, there's different, you know, feasts that they have. They have feasts of trumpets, then they, they're, these are very important points. When you look at things that have happened worldwide that are big, that have been, you know, foretold and are theological religious texts, not just Christianity, they happen on a Jewish feast because that's how God times things. That's how Jesus times things. And so we're around one of the feasts and I hear like someone, it's as though literally standing outside my bedroom window playing a trumpet. And then within a couple days, I was unloading my car, I was outside and all of a sudden I, I heard this and like a horse and it literally blew on my neck and, and jumped and maybe jumped and I was startled. And, and it was Jesus on this white horse and he told me to not be afraid. And he told me that it, it's time to prepare, starting, you know, it's time to start preparing. Now, if you're familiar, Jesus on a white horse, when he returns, he returns on a white horse. So, and you, and you can research, research that and, and check that out, but there are things that are about to occur, that are about to happen. So, like some may have noticed, like we've had a lot of people passing away the past two, three years. And like people that are young, totally unexpected. And, and it's been a lot of people. Like, you know, in our lifetimes, we've never seen anything like this until recently. That's going to continue into early 2018. That's because our loved ones, they know it's about to come. They want to witness it from the other side. They don't want to get to experience it with us. They will be with us. They will be helping us. They're just going to be doing it from the other side. They're gonna let us have the experience. And that's, that's why they, there have been so many of them passing on because they have, they have made that choice to not be on this side for everything. Now, again, it's not something to be afraid of, but what'll happen is these people who believe they will disappear. They'll be on this new earth. Now that new earth, I'm not gonna go into a whole bunch of details about that, but maybe at some point we'll do some down the road when, when they tell me it's time, we'll do some educational video about that. But essentially people will be there for about a thousand years. Eventually, it, essentially it's like the returning to Garden of Eden. And over that time, over that thousand years, people's bodies will evolve into light bodies. Uh, so then it will eventually evolve to the point that, you know, people are there, but they're, they're not in physical bodies. So but we'll talk about that more later. Simultaneously, around that same time, what will happen is these people will disappear, and that's going to be millions. Because a lot of people think that they're going to be left behind because you know, the Bible states only 100, 144,000 will be ascending. No, millions of people, people who are believers, are going to just boop, disappear. Almost at that exact time, immediately following the disappearance within minutes, the 144,000 will ascend. And those that are here on old earth will will physically see them ascending. And what they're going to see is they're going to see Jesus on a white horse. They're going to see his army of angels behind him, and they're all on white horses. And those 144,000 that are going to ascend, they are angels incarnated. They're physically in human bodies right now, but they will be ascending. They are part of God's army. And that's going to be kind of like the final throwdown with the dark. But uh, once that's all done, and that's going to be very swift and quick, I mean, if you look at human times, it's going to be something's going to happen in under an hour. It's going to be very, very fast. And uh, then those 144,000 will meet their families on the new earth, and it will seem like they weren't even gone. It'll seem like, you know, seconds. But um, it's not anything to fear. You really don't have anything to fear and worry about. I mean, if you look at it, you're, if you're listening to this video, you're preparing to go to New Earth. You're experiencing all these ascension systems. 
all these ascension symptoms, you're, ex you're, you're preparing. Your system's changing, your body's changing. You are preparing to make that change, make that leap. That's a beautiful thing. And when you look at it, I mean, it's been a struggle for us because we've had to lose friends, we've had to lose lovers, we've had all these things taken out of our life. But that's because those things aren't good for us. And we're going to a place that's filled with love and bliss and joy and unconditional love. Those things were not of unconditional love. So they're not meant to go with us. That's why we have to let them go. You can even find that you're having very positive experiences. Like maybe you have, I was talking with a friend and you know we were having a conversation about how you know, you can be driving the same path as someone else to work at the same time. And maybe you don't experience any traffic and you don't experience any car accidents. It's like easy breezy. You're hitting every green light. You're like, this day is amazing. Best ever. But then you talk to your friend who drove the same time, the same route, and they experienced nothing but stop traffic, red lights, car accidents. It was a horrible drive to work for them. That's because you're starting to see the split. The split's starting to already occur. So some of us are experiencing having really good positive experiences. Some of us are not having such good experiences. The split's starting to occur. And that's why now is the time to prepare. It's time to prepare spiritually. It's time to prepare mentally. It's time to prepare physically. And what that really means to us is it's, it's time to stop the distractions. You know, the, the angels have been talking nonstop in all of our videos the past couple months is stop the distractions, stop the multiple relationships, the rebounds, the drugs, the addictions, the behaviors that aren't, you know, in your, in your highest good. If you're supposed to be, you know, because those of us that have things that we still need to let go of that we're like clinging tightly to, we know what it is that we're being guided to do and let go of. We know that. It is time to do those things that we're being guided to do. So if, if you're being guided to let go of an ex or a partner or a job or, or even a diet change, what, whatever it is that you're being guided to do, do that. Because so many of us, because the things that we're still holding on to, we're holding on to it out of fear. We are terrified to let that person go, that thing go, because that's been, you know, that's been constant for us. That's been, even though it's not been happy, it's been stability for us. It's been comfort for us. We don't want to venture into the unknown, but that is the one thing that is not meant for us. It's not good for us, we know that. But instead of dealing with that, many of us have turned to other relationships or we've turned to alcohol or we've turned to drugs or we've turned to pornography or we've turned to anything and everything that will keep us off of doing what we're meant to do. Keep us from having those conversations. Keep us from ending those ties. Keep us from signing the paperwork. But the time has come to do those things because they're trying to bring us back to a state of unconditional love. They're trying to bring us to a state of loving ourselves, loving others. They're bringing us into a state of wholeness. We can't be whole and happy with this baggage we keep lugging around. We have got to let the baggage go because we're drowning. We've been struggling to tread water for a while and it's drowning us. So we've, we've got to let that dead weight go. And what you will find this weekend, if you happen to listen to this, uh, the first weekend of September, for those of us in the United States, should be celebrating Labor Day. But it'll be this weekend all the way through the full moon that we're going to be having this first week of September. It's going to be intense. You're going to feel some of that intensity that you felt around the eclipse. And that's because they're hitting us to release those things that don't serve us. So, like maybe you're noticing a repeated theme. Like something keeps happening over and over and over, but you're clinging to something you know you need to let go of. It, it's time to let go because you can't take that, that with you. You can't take that person with you. So maybe, maybe you started, you know, dating someone else. Maybe, maybe there's an ex you're supposed to be letting go of. And, you know, you've not let that ex go because maybe you think it's gonna change, or maybe there's money worries, or you're afraid of going into the unknown. Or it could be that like your, your family relies, and I'm not talking to your kids because you still get to take care of your children. <laughs> you, you need to keep taking care of your children. But I'm talking about like maybe their family counts on you, their siblings or something, or maybe there's like some community connection with them and you don't wanna let them down. But for some reason, if you boil it down though, it's fear, you continue to hold on to them. But maybe you're not talking with them at this point. You know, you've not ended the final ties. So while you're sitting in this place of limbo, knowing that you're to release that X and you haven't, not wanting to deal with it, 
you start jumping into other relationships and maybe you jump into a rebound relationship, but you're discovering that that rebound is a lot like your ex. You know, maybe, maybe they, they are very manipulative or maybe they really try and nag you into doing things or push you to do things, or maybe they're trying to push you to quickly commit, or they could be like a me person, self-centered, it's all about them. Or they make you feel bad. Feel bad in order to get you to do something that they want you to do. And, and you feel kind of like, dang, this is, this is like my ex. I feel like I've jumped back into my ex. That's because it's a repeated pattern. You are seeing the same attributes and characteristics of your ex because you have not released your ex. You have not released that karma. You have not learned that lesson. So it's ramping up. It's ramping up because it's time to let that, that person go. So this, this time, this weekend through the full moon, this next week, many people are gonna have some huge breakthroughs, some big epiphanies, some ahas, that is meant to help you let go of that fear that is keeping you from taking that leap of faith, that final step of clearing that karma, releasing that person, releasing that situation, because the time has, has come. And we've been pushed to do this for a couple years because what you'll find is, essentially the way the planets are, are gonna be aligned at this time is the same way they were aligned during the eclipse in 2015. So some of you were being pushed to release the exact same thing or person two years ago in August, 2015. But what happened is you did not wanna let go. You're like, oh hell no, I'm gonna hold on. I'm gonna hold on with both hands. I'm gonna cling with both legs. I'm gonna drag on their leg because I'm not letting them go. This is my plan, I'm sticking to it. I refuse to release it or release them. But you clung on. So for some of you say it was a love interest. You know, in the fall, heading into the winter of 2015, you decided to, maybe you proposed to them. Maybe you remarried them, maybe you married them. Maybe you stopped divorce proceedings. Or it could be maybe you, you stayed at that job. But instead of letting go, you went the opposite direction. You clung out of fear. For many of us, the exact same thing we were to release in 2015 is boiling back up. And many of you have seen that same exact situation bubble up recently, and you're really gonna see it bubble up this week because it's out of fear that you're clinging on to it or clinging on to them. The time has come. It is, it is time to let them go. It is time to let the situation go. We are really being pushed to take that leap of faith take that plunge, release the fear, release them. We're also gonna be pushed to deal with the things that we, that we keep ignoring. So maybe we don't wanna deal with it because it's gonna be an uncomfortable conversation or a difficult, difficult conversation, or it's gonna be you know, outside of our norm, outside of our comfort zones. So we're like, oh gosh, I just don't wanna deal with that. I just can't deal with that right now. I'd rather just keep uh, burying my head in the sand or burying my head in someone else instead of having to deal with it it's coming to a culmination point where it has to be dealt with. That's why we have been under so much intense pressure now for a couple years, because we have to release it, we have to let it go. We can't go to the new earth, we can't go through this ascension stuff that's about to happen until we release these people, these situations, this karma. If you look at it, an easy way to look at it is to, to sit down and think, okay, what was I supposed to learn from this person? Because if you look at it, or situation, Typically, it's, there's something that you were to learn to love yourself unconditionally. Because if we love ourselves unconditionally, we won't allow people to treat us that way. We won't allow them to make us feel as though we are less than. We will establish healthy boundaries. We will not tolerate a job where we are not respected and valued. But we have to love ourselves. But instead of getting so wound up in emotions, if we can separate and look at it, and also pray, God, Jesus, angels, help me. What was I supposed to learn from this? Because as soon as you realize what you were supposed to learn, suddenly you don't have the emotions, you don't have the desire to cling to them anymore. You're like, okay, deuces. Deuces, learned it, don't wanna go through this anymore, I'm tired of this crap. And for those of you that have found a rebound that they're the exact same as an ex, you'll be done with them too. Because you're like, no, I deserve better than that. I am worthy of better than that. I am so worthy of so much better and I've now figured out what I was supposed to learn and I'm done with it. But the time to do that is now because 
you can't take them with you. And you don't want to be stuck here because you, you can't release the fear. You can't release those words. You can't come back to a state of loving yourself unconditionally. That's why we're all being pushed. It's gotten so intense for all of us. But for those of us that have released things, congratulations, because you're, those of you that have released those big karmic things, yeah, the, the eclipse was still, it was intense for everybody. It was still intense. It might have bothered you a little bit, but, but you weren't depressed. You weren't having panic attacks. You were just kind of breezing through it. Congratulations. You have released your big lessons, your karma. You are prepared. You are ready. For those of you that are not, use this time to let it go, to sit down, and also to, to face your emotions because for some of you, they're saying you don't want to deal with it because you do not want to face your emotions. You don't want to share them. You don't want to acknowledge that you have them. You don't want to open up. You don't want to be honest. You don't want to be honest with yourself. You don't want to be honest with others. This is the time to do that. Let those walls down. Take your mask off. It will be worth it. And for those of you that are fearing the conversations, they're not going to be as difficult as you think they will be. Because if it's meant to be, if it's a conversation to let someone or something go, it's going to go real easy and you're going to release that instantaneously because you have so much support on the other side. And also on the flip side, if it's a conversation for someone that you're meant to bring into your life or something that you are meant to do, that's going to go really easy too. Because sometimes we beat ourselves up because we think, oh, I really messed that up real bad. That's not going to happen. Don't have those fears. Just, you have an entire team helping you. Ask that they help you. Because again, the thing to keep in mind, our angels cannot help us unless we ask for their help. The, because we have free will. The only time they will ever step in without us asking is if it's life or death. If it's not our time to go, they're going to step in and keep us here. But other than that, they will face palm all day long and wonder, why won't you ask? We can help you. We can make it easier. Just ask for their help. They will make it easy. It'll be a breeze. Because if you had nothing but heartache and trials and tribulations and blocks and headaches this whole time, you know what you're guided, you're being guided to do. You got this whole team behind you that's going to help you execute it and make those changes. Let them help you. Ask them. They help you do that this week. It'll be worth it. And then you'll find that you're not going to be stuck in this little hell any longer because for those of you that have clung on, it's been a pretty miserable two years. Aren't you ready for things to get better? For things to get better, it's time to stop the distractions, do what you're being guided to do. Because when you've released that person, situation, that karma, you have learned that lesson, you will be back to a state of loving yourself. You will not feel bad about making choices that are good for you. You will not allow someone to control and dominate you. You will set healthy boundaries and you'll just come back into a state of a bliss of happiness where life's easy, where you're that person who's driving down the road and you've got every green light and you're listening to your favorite song and you're getting a little dance party going on in your car. You're like, life is so good. Thank you for this. Life is good. To come back to a state of loving life and loving every minute of it and knowing that life is good, you got to do your work. But it's not going to be as hard as you think. So they're there. Let them help you. Do that. Use this time. Use this energy. Use your team and just do it already. Get her done. And then get back to your happy because they're, they're ready to bring you some happy. Okay, so I know that was long and I'm going to do each of your signs and astrological readings. So just know that however long this is right now, you're just going to get to skip past this on each of them. I will put it at the beginning of each one. And uh, let's go ahead and get started with your monthly astrological readings. Hello Aquarius, how are you? Okay, let's get settled and move the dogs. They are freezing, it's cold here in Ohio today. So they are bundled up behind me in a blanket. But uh, get them out of the way, let's go ahead and see what is going on for you in the month of September. I have prayed over the cards shuffled, asked each of you to get at least one message. If those of you that are interested in the cards that we're using today, we are pulling from Doreen Virtue's Fairy Tarot deck, as well as her Mary Queen of Angels, Archangel Michael decks, and the Wisdom Oracle deck by Colette Baron Reed. And you are getting some extra cards. I've also prayed over and shuffled my Sabila's and Lenormand's and my Findesickle Kippers. So as we work our way through it, if we need any clarifiers, I will pull those at that time. Okay, you're getting 
two extra cards. Look at you, your lucky month. Everyone else only got three cards. Well, there was one sign that got two, I think from Michael's deck. So, but you get an extra bonus. You're very special, Aquarius. Okay, let me see if you can see this. No, we are so close though. How's that working? Uh, close enough for government work. We're going to take it. Take it and run. Okay. So what we have here is we have your situation. What's the foundation which could have led to the situation for most? What is blocking you? What is unknown to you? And then these cards at the top, those are what the angels are recommending you do this month. Now... You're like 50-50, you have two major arcanas. Those are things that are large, they're big, they're faded, they're huge milestones. They are often out of your control because they are destined, they are faded. We, we don't really have much control over those things. They're, they're gonna happen. But that's the nice thing about listening to readings because that kind of gives you a little warning that you know this is gonna happen so you can just a little more gracefully navigate through it. Now you do have two minor arcanas, also called pips. Those are things that you do have a little bit more control over. So you, you get a little bit, a little bit of control this month. Now, as far as your situation, you have walk away from dishonest associations, realizing that what you thought you wanted isn't the best choice for your happiness, something that's not worth the effort. And Traditional tarot, this would be swords, and it's all about, you know, our thoughts, things that we're thinking, and it's really about, you know, things not going our way. You see, he's got all these snowballs built up to have a snowball fight, but, but his friends left, they walked away. But things not going our way because you're being guided onto a better path, a new path, something that will be successful, because this path that you were on is, is not filled with integrity. People's intentions were not pure. So, you know, you could be coming from a place of kindness, your intentions could be pure, but others, theirs is not. So these associations with these people, they're breaking that. They're trying to get you to start new associations with people that do have integrity, do have high morals, do have compassion for others. Trying to get you away from negative people, negative individuals, negative groups and organizations that lack principles and honesty trying to release you from those who don't share your ethics and values. Because the situation that you've been in is, is not worth it. They are not on the same page. I hate it for a lot of you. It's like a company, organization that you're involved with. They, they don't have scruples. They don't have values. They don't have integrity. They're lacking that. And you feel as if you're in, in this battle. Traditional, the, I have the gilded tarot and it shows these the people these people competed they're actually competing there's five of them in traditional tarot and there's these five men they're competing but it warns to be aware of what other people's intentions are and also be aware of any unfair advantages but it's really you know walking away walking away from a dishonest organization a dishonest association things that really are not worth your effort because they have something better for you in mind And I think for many of you, you've been wanting to make this change because you actually, you have two fives. Fives are all about change. You, so you have been, and you even have 23 that boils down to five. So you've been wanting this change, but it has been a long time coming because underneath it on the foundation, you have the wheel, which is 10. And at the bottom, it says delays are over, sudden or unexpected good luck a new car or travel and you see like goldilocks spitting her hair but the wheel is all about you know truly the delays being finished done it's now magical time and things are really moving forward into those changes that you've hoped for that you've longed for that you have wanted you've wanted the wheel to move forward you wanted things to move but you've been stuck and this is about good fortune the heavens smiling down on you having full support having all around good luck a lot of synchronicities and signs that things are moving, the momentum's moving, things are picking up. 
getting the answers to your questions, the answers to your, because a lot of you, you've had a lot of questions and, and a lot of things that you didn't have clarity on. Like you wanted things to move, but things were not moving. And you weren't getting any information. You weren't knowing. So she's like looking to the future, looking forward, kind of like, what in the heck is going on? Why is it not moving? You didn't know why things weren't moving. You didn't know the answers. You didn't know what the world was going on. But things are changing now. Doors are opening. Things are moving. Things are shifting. Luck, your luck is shifting. Progress will be made now. But you do need to remain optimistic. Now, the interesting thing is, because again, those of you in the situation, you want to end this. So maybe it's a job you want to leave, a company you want to leave. You've been trying to break free from it, but you have been stuck. We have the, the scales. Some of you have been stuck because of something legal, like a legal battle. with that company, that organization, your employer, or some dispute. And it's taken a long, long, long time. And you've wanted to leave, but you, you've not been able to until, until this, this legal matter dispute, this, this thing while you were working through that. And it has taken some time. But again, this is the foundation that has led to the current situation. So things are now going to suddenly start swiftly moving forward for you. Because the wheel is, the wheel is fast. But you have had to stay in this organization, this situation where you were standing firm in your values, in your beliefs, in your integrity. You were coming from the right place. Some of you were doing things to try and help other people. You were going to battle for other people. You were fighting for other people. So it could be maybe your whistleblower or something and something went wrong with your company. And you're like, oh no, that's not going to happen on my watch. So maybe you got into a legal battle with your company or you shared the truth of what was going on and, and you're trying to make things right to fight for other people. But it has been a long, long, drawn out, cold fight. <clears throat> but it's about to change. You're about to get information. Things are about to move forward. And it's going to be fast. So for some of you, you've been waiting for months or years and all of a sudden, it's going to move. It's going to move fast. So for some of you, it's going to be done this month. You'll finally be freed this month. Which is what you, what you want. The thing that's holding you back. You have five of autumn. And let's see. See, we have one cold dog getting in the way. Let's move her. Let's put their blanket on the ground. Maybe they'll leave us alone. There we go. So you have five of autumn, reach out to others for assistance, poor timing for a career change, feeling challenged by money issues. And this really is, you know, needing help, but feeling like we're not receiving help. But we're not receiving help because we're not asking for it. Because you know, like the angels, they can't step in to help us unless it's a life or death situation because we have free will. So they can sit and watch us all day long struggle, but until we ask that they please come and help us, they can't do anything. But you have a lot of help. You're surrounded by help. You have everything that you need. They're giving you a lot of signs to try and help you, but for some of you, you're just so frustrated because this has been going on for so long. It's like, see how the head's like downturned? It's like, you're not even noticing the signs. You're like, I just, I can't do this anymore. I'm over it but you're fearing the worst, you're kind of upset, you're afraid more difficulties and delays are going to pop up. But when we have those self-fulfilling prophecies and those thoughts, that's, that's what happens. That's why they're self-fulfilling prophecies. If we think those things, that's what's going to happen. So you're feeling challenged, you're feeling alone, you're feeling like this is never going to be over. But it will be. It's like you're ready to move on they're like showing this water. 
it's like rippled like uh, water drops are hitting it, like tears. Some of you, if you like put blood, sweat, and tears in this and you're just, because it's, it's raining. So you're to say that you're, that you're worried and, you, and you're distraught wondering, it, when's this going to end? When do I get to start a new beginning? Why can't I move forward? So number for you, it could be work. And you can't leave that, leave that situation at work yet. Maybe, maybe you want to start a new business or maybe you want, maybe it's also just you want to have more fun and free time. You want to do things that make you happy, but you're in such a state of sadness and sorrow and, and It's almost like some of you are just like immobilized because it's like looking down, he's leaning on this cane, like, oh my gosh, I just can't take another step. Um, I feel like I'm drowning. I feel like I'm going underwater. But you're not. You're not. You have a lot of help. This can also be representative, of, you know, being challenged by money. That's why for a lot of you, this is something tied to, to work, to career, to money, to organizations that make you money, finances. But you are not alone. You have a lot of help. That's that's what's blocking you is you do feel you're alone. You do feel that it's very, just very rough. It's not moving forward. You're stuck. You can't do the things that you want to do. But that's really in changing our perspective and looking at things differently. Now, as far as what is unknown, you have another major arcana. It's eight justice. And at the bottom, it says, take the time to review the details carefully. You will win in the end. Fair and objective decisions. And this is, you know, really is justice. It's, it's sticking to our guns, sticking to our principles, trusting that the opinions, the thoughts, the beliefs, the synchronicities, the signs that we are receiving are indeed correct. Not allowing people to talk us out of our beliefs, our priorities, the things that we want, the outcome that we desire. Knowing with absolute certainty that things are going to turn out in our favor being clear on what we want, standing up for that and knowing that we will receive it. Some of you are like an advocate for the truth. You are of a pure heart because if you look at these little fairy twins, they're staring at the Excalibur, the sword that, you know, people could only use it, could only touch it if they were worthy of it. And they were of a true heart, a pure heart, coming with pure intentions, pure love. So number of you, you're in this situation because you do have pure intentions. You are doing the right thing. Some of you, you're trying to help other people. You're trying to set things straight. Your adversaries, the people who are thwarting you, trying to stop you, slowing this process down, they are not of pure intentions. But things are about to be balanced. Things are about to be balanced because the past deeds and actions and things that you have done which are of pure heart are determining your now determining your future so they are determining what's going to be occurring this month for you so don't feel like it's hopeless like you're stuck in a situation because you're not you definitely are not and it is they're saying for some of you justice will be served in September so for some of you, if it's a legal battle, you will be receiving information about that this month. Now, let's move these. Now, as far as what is recommended that you do, the first card you have is optimism. I allow my feminine nature to shine brightly as a valuable part of my identity. You see, she's holding this baby, and this is, you know, because Mother Mary, she was strong, she was also feminine. She was very sweet and loving, but she also was clear about her duty to serve God and what she was here to do. And we all have a feminine side. Men, women, we all do. And it's, it's coming into balance. It's allowing ourselves to access that feminine side and also, you know, allowing others to access it. But the feminine side of our nature is it's loving, it's warm, it's nurturing, it's intuitive, it's caring, it's tenderness, sweetness, softness. It's also receptivity. 
So in order to receive help, you have to open up to your feminine side, receive their assistance. Also with intuition. So a number of you are getting signs and, and synchronicities and steps. They're trying to divinely give you steps of what to do next. And for some of you, they're just also trying to give you signs and, and information that, hey, this is, this is almost over. Get out, get out of your state of sorrow and feeling that it's not going to work out in your favor. It's almost done, but you're not noticing those signs because you're not open to receiving that and you're not open to your intuition because the feminine is also all about intuition. Our spiritual gifts, that intuition that we have, that knowing it's tied to the feminine and receiving those signs. So they're saying, allow yourself to receive signs, receive information, and also to receive some help. Because they are trying to help you and they're saying for some of you, you also have other people that are trying to help you. Allow them to do that. Now, as far as optimism, at the bottom it says, I expect good things to happen and they do. So we're saying for a number of you, you do have to shift your perspective to knowing that th good things are going to happen, good things are going to occur. This is going to turn out in your favor. These are saying that you are, you're at that 11th hour, you are at that critical mass point. You've been waiting, you've been waiting, you've been waiting, you've been waiting, you've been stuck forever, but something is about to occur this month for most of you that's going to very rapidly jolt things forward and bring things to a completion. So it's like all this time of waiting to just suddenly rapidly, almost instantaneously be done. But when you are at that 11th hour, because our, our thoughts do manifest. So, you know, if we are having those self-fulfilling prophecies that, oh my gosh, this isn't gonna turn out in my favor and I'm not gonna get what I want. And this, you know, I did all this and it's for naught and I'm gonna lose money and, whatever the fears are, if you're allowing them to overcome and overwhelm you, especially in the 11th hour when you're about to see the results of this and this is about to come to a completion point, you don't want those negative thoughts to manifest. So be positive, be optimistic. Know that you are going to receive everything that you deserve, everything that you want. Know that it is going to turn out exactly as you expect and you want it to turn out and then sit back in September and watch that happen. Okay. It's interesting that this is at the center because they're saying this is, this is the, the focus of things that you should be doing in September. It's peace and it's freedom from attachment, radical acceptance, harmony, coming into like literally complete harmony where we create prosperity we create abundance but it's all created by us just being in a state of calmness just being there is all we need and despite everything else that's going on around us and how we fear that things aren't going to turn out because a lot of you you just your head's spinning your thoughts are spinning you 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 are starting to get some signs and some information but you're now at the point like, oh my gosh, how's this gonna work out? Is it gonna be bad? Is it, you know, do I have to do something else? Did I miss a step? Did I overlook something? Be at peace. You're kind of at that point where that aircraft is just coming on in and it's hovering, it's getting ready to touch down with the landing. All you need to do is just be there and be in a state of calm, a state of peace. And for some of you, you see You see this olive branch? This white dove is bringing in this olive branch. Some of you were done very wrong by this organization. This organization did something ethically, morally, illegally wrong to you, towards you, against you. And for some of you, they did it not just to you, but to other people. You see how she's it's almost kind of like a Joan of Arc. Like she's going to battle for other people. And now she's being crowned for her sacrifice. So she sacrificed and went through hell and all this stuff to help others, to be an advocate for others. 
also herself, but others. And it was a sacrifice. It was long. It was hard. It was difficult. But now she's being crowned. She's now being rewarded for that. That's where some of you are at. You are about to be rewarded for what you have done, what you have sacrificed. And also for what you have been put through. So for some of you, you're going to be receiving some type of legal settlement. And so the organization is extending an olive branch to you for all that they have put you through. Which then in turn, who knows, maybe it's money you're going to receive and you'll start a new business. You got this little egg, it's glowing, it's got a star in the middle with someone's face in it. But you're going to get the clarity, the clouds are going to clear. You will have a completion. This is going to come to an ending. It is going to end in your favor. Be at peace, be at calm, and know it's going to work well. And you will be discovering that this month. Now, Archangel Michael, he wanted two cards to come out. He actually, this one was from the top and he's got one from the bottom. And this says, use your imagination and you'll see the answer. And at the bottom there is a prayer. Dear God, thank you for granting me the wisdom and creativity to see your miracles in new and unexpected ways. I gratefully and gracefully accept and appreciate your help and describe the situation. And this really is about our prayers being answered in unexpected ways. Receiving messages and guidance that's like unexpected. We don't, we weren't expecting that. Also releasing any preconceived notions and beliefs and views and perceptions that we have. Because sometimes, you know, you may think, okay, there's, there's no, say somebody's like, oh, whistleblower, and it's, you know, them versus some big corporation. They're like, oh, this is no way this is going to happen. They're going to brush under the rug. They're not going to deal with it. They're going to continue to do this wrongdoing stuff. You know, I might, I might as well not even attempt it but you're surrounded by angels and divine that that want things to be done correctly they want things to be done ethically because in, in a situation where it's like a big company and a whistleblower this is you know they could be doing something that's affecting millions of people or thousands but god and angels don't want people to be treated wrong they don't want wrongdoing to other people so you may think oh my gosh it's just me i'm going to be fighting alone by myself this isn't going to help this isn't going to do any good but you'll be surprised because God and the angels, they have way more resources than you ever realize. So those of you that are in some situation that you've had to fight, like you had a lot of signs and synchronicities in the very beginning that you had to do this, that you had to move forward. You had to put in that fight, no matter how far-fetched and outlandish it seemed, like you didn't have a chance, you didn't have a prayer to make any of this work. You do. And you're, and they're saying for a number of you, you're about to, you're about to witness that and see that. Because some of, some of you, it's also not only did you have this big battle to overcome of, oh my gosh, I can't do this. I can't take this on. I can't, can't fight for this. I can't go through this. But because it's drug on for so long, you're beginning to think, well, maybe this isn't going to happen. Maybe this was all for naught. You know what? Maybe, maybe I was totally wrong. Maybe I took the wrong step. Maybe I... I screwed up and I, I took the wrong turn. I'm, I'm rethinking this whole thing. You did not. They are going to bring it to a culmination, to a completion for you. You think there's no way it's going to come to a completion and there's no way this is going to work out in your favor, but it's going to. But you don't have to do anything. They're taking care of it. You are safe and protected. And so are your loved ones. At the bottom it says, Dear God and Archangel Michael, thank you for watching over me and my loved ones. Name specific individuals. Please help me feel secure and at peace and fill me with faith so that I may focus on my priorities and enjoy a healthful, happy life. You are protected. You're protected by God. You're protected by the angels. You're protected by Archangel Michael. Archangel Michael is the protector. He is the number one warrior. And for some of you, it says though you've had to be a warrior to fight this battle, to go through this. But this card is also telling you it's time for you to relax. It's time for you to relax. It's time for you to let go. It's time for you to just be. Let them take it from here. You're safeguarded. You are watched over. Know that Archangel Michael is protecting you. You are protected. 
nothing's going to happen to you because some of you are fearful that now something's going to happen to you. So like maybe it's a company or something. There's, I guess for most of you, there's some wrongdoing that was occurring and you went to go and fight against that. It's wrongdoing to you, wrongdoing to you and others, but you went to stand up for what's right. Now it's, some of you are like fearful like this, A, isn't going to work out in your favor or B, there'll be like some retribution or, or people coming after you or like trying to fire you. Like sometimes if you're doing something in a company and you're trying to fix things, you know, sometimes people will have them come after them and, and try to terminate them or... Some of you have some fears like that, but, but you don't have to be afraid. There is nothing for you to worry about. This battle that you've been going through, those of you in the situation, you know that because it was divinely orchestrated, you were divinely led. They are congratulating you because you have taken all the steps that you've been guided to do along the way. Now you are at the point that it's just time for you to sit back, trust, and let them, let them bring it home. And again, it's, it's kind of like an aircraft. You, you can be going through a ton of turbulence and then all of a sudden, you know, turbulence is throwing your aircraft all around while you're flying and then all of a sudden you come in for your landing and the wings settle out, everything slows down. Instead of being tossed about, suddenly you're like smooth. Those last few seconds before you touch the ground, the wings are level, everything's calm and you touch down. You are at that point where you have been going through storms, you've been going through turbulence, you thought for sure a wing was gonna be knocked off, you were gonna lose an engine, and you were gonna spiral to your death. It's been a hellacious flight, it's been horrible, it's been miserable, it's been long, it's been difficult, it's been filled with trials and tears and tribulations, but you are now coming in for landing. You are coming in now, you are at the state of hovering. You are in those last final seconds before you touch down. Things are now smooth. Trust that, know that, let go and let them take care of everything now. You've done your part. Time to let them do their part and bring this home. And for most of you, they are going to do that this month because it, uh, they're saying the time has come. It's time. It's time to complete this. So for some of you, this is karmic. This is some karmic cycle. It's time to, they're saying it's now time to complete that cycle. And they're saying for some of you, it's like the, the sidewalks are lined with gold. They're lined with gold. Right now it's going to be easy for you and you don't even realize how easy it's going to be. So let's, real quick, we will do all four of these. We'll start with the five of winter. We'll go to the wheel and we'll do the other two. Okay. So, so you have unexpected income. This is all about sudden, swift, unexpected change and improvements, particularly improvements with career, money, finances. And then you have pathway. And this is all about a really long, rocky road. You know, something that's even like time-wise, it's lasted for a long time. Because for some of you, this has been going on for months, could be going on for years, but it has been the angels just confirmed it by smacking my water bottle, but it's been going on a really long time and you're just, you're just worn out. You're beat up, but then you have high honor. And this is of all the cards in the Findesicles. This is the most positive and enabling card in all of them, because this is, it's a 21 gun salute. You are being honored. Where's that card? You're being honored for what you have done, for the sacrifices that you have made, for the things that you have gone through. And really, I mean, for some it could be receiving awards, trophies, medals, honors, but it's all about success. The end of all the difficulties now coming and culminating in completing with, with success. We're going to come back and tie it to this. Because again, this is the foundation that's leading to this. You're not here yet. You're going to be here in September. You're going to go from the state of being where it's been this long road 
bumpy, you trip, you fall, you bust your head on the rocks, you go a little bit further, you twist your ankle, but these butterflies, it's about to transform and it's going to transform almost instantaneously. You see in here, see how this person's like, sleeve is all ragged and torn and beat up. Some of you are just feeling beat up, but it's gonna end on a beautiful note and end rapidly. <laughs> That's why, okay. So what's, hi, Miss Sally. Miss Sally wants to come up and say hello to everyone. I might put her up in the screen at the end. Move her baby. Okay. So you have distant horizons and this is, see how this, this ship's, it's like all dreamy. It's got all these different colors. I mean, it's moving into the future. It's moving toward your wildest dreams, your hopes, the things that you've been visualizing, the things that you want. It's sailing to new shores. It's getting out of this rocky turbulence. But then you have the courthouse and this, this is all about legal matters lawsuits, court proceedings, contracts, disputes, but it's also about discovering the truth and decisions being made because he's walking out holding the final decision in his hands. And that decision is what's going to lead to the change. And you have the change. You see he's like packing up and loading his car because he's moving from one home to another home. He's leaving this town ho townhouse forever, forever. He's moving to a new one. He's never going to return to this old home. And these are on the wheel. And this is again, this is the, this is what's leading to this. So you've been in this battle for a very, very long time. You've been wanting to move to new shores. You've been wanting to move forward. You've been wanting to get away from this mess, but you've had to allow the dispute, the legal, the legal battle, everything to work through. Also the dispute they're saying that the disagreement, but you've had to allow it time to process. But again, the wheel, it's rapid, it's fast, it's sudden, it's swift. You're about to discover this month, the decision, the final decision, the final determination is being made and immediately you're gonna be able to jump in your car and leave, jet off and move on to something better. It's going to end all these trials and tribulations. It is going to end in your favor. It is going to end in your favor. So it has been worth it. You've been through a lot, but it has been worth it. Now what's blocking you, so you have toil and labor. You see she's working in a machine shop. This is just brutal work. You know, sometimes you could lose a finger, you could lose a hand. Sometimes people could lose their life. Crazy work hours. It's like a sweatshop. It's thankless. It's, you know, you can have good deeds, but the good deeds are punished. You feel kind of almost like you're, you're on a hamster wheel. This situation that you have gone through, it has been karmic and it has been fated and it has been led and orchestrated by the divine. Because for some of you, there's something really big that you've changed with this. You see, you have the wheels, the wheels, the wheels, the wheels. This was a total karmic cycle. This was something that had to be completed, full circle, changed, shifted. And you are a key element in shifting and changing it. Which is why you have all that divine support and that's why now you just need to sit back while they bring in for a landing. For many of you, it is tied to work. You do have occupation. And you see the seamstress, she's working, she's very skilled at what she does, but she doesn't get paid much. This can also represent hobbies, things that we enjoy doing, you know, something that we want to put a lot of effort and focus into. It can even speak of self-employment, starting a new business. And then we have child. And this is speaking about innocence and new beginnings, fresh starts.
So what's blocking you? Is you're ready to get off this cycle where you're not feeling appreciated. You feel like you're putting a bunch of work and a bunch of effort in for not. You're ready for a new beginning. You are ready for a fresh start. You keep thinking about that. Now you are fearful that you're not going to get that fresh start. You're fearful that these things you have been wanting, this culmination, this completion, this ability to change, to move forward, you're fearful it's not going to happen. For some of you, you're wanting to leave this situation and even start your own business, but you've been delayed in doing that because of this. It's all hinging off this being completed. But the second that's completed, you will have the new beginning that you, that you desire. And for some of you, it's, you know, like they keep talking about like these tears, the sadness, the leaves dying and falling. For some of you, you, you feel like, you know, why have I had to go through this? This has been nothing but heartache and trials and tribulation. This has been one of the most challenging things I have ever had to go through and endure. I'm innocent. I haven't done anything wrong. Why am I going through this? You had to. It was something that was fated. It was something that was karmic. It was something that had to happen. For some, it had to happen to free you. For some, it, so for, for those of you, this did have to happen to free you and start that new beginning, the other things that you desire. But it's also something for some that had to happen and occur to help others and free them as well. Because for some of you, this is way bigger than just you. Now last, what you are unaware of, what is unknown, you have the false person. And this is someone, see how she's hiding her face behind the fan? Even he's hiding his face. They, you know, they're false. They're false friends. They're manipulators. They're frenemies. They are deceiving you. They're, they're people that you can't trust. So there is someone that you cannot trust and it is a man for most of you. And then we have this thoughts. Now this thoughts, typically this is him thinking about a lover, thinking about, you know, what his ideal lover would be. And usually this card is positive, but in this situation it is not. So you know how some of you, you're like, why is this happening? I don't know why this is happening. I don't know why this is taking so long. You've had a male who, is been, who has been trying to slow your efforts, stop your efforts because of what he thinks, because of what he thinks about you. Hmm. For some of you, it's an older man. I like it when the what they're telling me is 100% matching the cards. I was asking, who's this Who's this woman that he's thinking about? And this is the Lanamika, and this is the, the female enemy, the woman who acts in secret. She's, you know, she has a mask as well. They make a lovely couple. But she has a mask. She's lying, she's hiding, she's got a knife, she's ready to jab somebody. She's an enemy. So for some of you, this man who has been delaying this process, hurting this process, maybe somebody's even been trying to hurt your reputation. He's been doing slander toward you, about you, which has delayed this. But they, whoever is doing these proceedings, investigation, court hearing, they have come or they will be coming. Well, they're saying for most of you, they've come to that realization. You just don't have the final determination yet. But they have realized that you're innocent. Despite what he has said, because he has tried to slander you and make you out to be the enemy. For some of you, he thinks you're the enemy. But some of you, he thinks you're the enemy because he's the one that's not ethical. He lacks the ethics. He lacks the morals. He lacks the moral integrity. 
And now you are the enemy because you have called him out on that. And that's why he's trying to thwart this and stop this at every point that he can. And he has been successful in causing some delays. For others of you, you remind him of a female lover who had betrayed and hurt him in the past. So for some of you, maybe some injustice was done to you and that's how this whole thing started. And you're like, what in the world ever happened? I, I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't mess up. Why have I been treated like this? Why? It's because someone above you, someone you've reminded them of an ex, reminded them of a lover who betrayed them, who hurt them. So even someone like, it, and it can even be a subconscious thing. Say, you know, you have a, an ex-lover, maybe is you know, his name's Steve. And maybe Steve was a con man. Maybe Steve stole a bunch of money from you and he lied to you and he cheated on you. And, you know, it was the worst experience ever. Well, then you could meet someone new named Steve. And even though consciously, you know that this isn't the Steve that hurt you. You know it was a different Steve subconsciously there's something in you that like, ooh, the hair stands up, like, ooh, Steve, oh, Mufasa. You just, there's just something that turns you off immediately. So for some of you, that was the situation. You have nothing to do with sex, you have nothing to do with this person that hurt you, but just because there's this thing that occurred in his past, you have taken the blame and fall for that. You've had to go through injustices because of that. So some of you are going to find that out this month. But for all of you in this situation, what's unknown to you is justice is about to be served in September. Now it could be October for some of you, but they're saying for most of you, nearly all of you, this is going to be done in September. So praise God, because you have been really going through it. You've been going through it, Aquarius, but uh, it's about to be done. So just know that, be positive about that, sit back, let the uh, let God and the angels wrap this up for you and slap a bow on it because it's about to be done. It will be a very good month for you. So I do wish you all an amazing month filled with a lot of love, joy, and blessings.